us what you think afterwards. Okay, do you guys want to hide in a bush or something, or you want me to? Yeah, uh, too yeah, risky. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Why don't you Let's just bring it here? Just bring it here. Oh, uh, okay, okay, actually, hold dude, on, watch it. Dude, dude, casino, casino, no, 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 the, the no, no, hidden room, no, 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 watch this. Hidden room. Oh, my. Saucy. Damn, yes. Damn, Leslie. Yeah, bring it you in. jerk hey, off we'll the fucking hentai? Hey, hey, don't talk about that. I showed you my hidden room, alright? I don't show this to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bring her here. This is perfect. Talk right by the arcade right. machines. Okay, yeah. Just act oh. like you're playing the game while you're talking to it. Oh, this is fucking perfect. God, I fucking love Joe with your boy. So funny. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> hey, Nancy. Um... I'm around late tonight because I am doing some PDM payments I was supposed to do yesterday, but I'm kind of slow, so I did them today. And I got around to hearing that there was some some unclear business, and I wanted to hear your perspective on things. Yes, you and me, though. Oh, he's trying to hide people's numbers. Let's see, um, I'm around late tonight because I am doing some. PDM payments I was supposed to do yesterday, but I'm kind of slow, so I did them today, and I got around to hearing that there was some some unclear business, and I wanted to hear your perspective on things. I Just you and me, though. Yes, of course. Is that possible? That is, absolutely. I can come All and right. see you right now. Yeah, you know where you can find me? I'm in my tower. In your tower? Oh, yes, I do know where you are. Okay, is the door right. unlocked? Yes. Okay, I'll be there in just a moment. All right, I'll okay. see you soon. Bye-bye. Leslie's going to be the most reasonable out of all of them. Okay, I have to go meet with Leslie. About all this shit? I'm assuming so. He said he wants to get my perspective. He wants to have a one-on-one. -on -one. He is the most right. reasonable out of the three, so I'm hoping... Well, stay on, stay on radio just in yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let me know if oh, anything... He, where are, where are you going to be? Him. Yeah, where are you going to be? I'm going to be... Just up the street, actually. He has a secret. Right. He has a secret office that he wants me to go to. Okay. Do you want me to take you to the apartments? Um. I don't know where yeah. Is. You don't. You don't want me to wait out for you or anything. He is not gonna hurt me. He right. has no criminal record. He is not gonna hurt me. I am not scared of him. He is actually, I think, trying to mediate more than anything. All right. Well, you can you can tell him that I'm totally willing to do. We can do the hundred. We can replace anything if they did take out the power. Or if it wasn't that, you know, if it wasn't just a random occurrence. Yeah. We can we can replace that. We can do the hundred, but you know, you would need to send at least me, preferably me and you together with it. You know what I mean? What's your and that channel? could be a Sorry. that could be a compromise. Um. Are you, are you oh yeah. Still on, still on. Yeah, we're still on the same one. Okay. Um, so yeah, that would be. Uh, not, I think the, the best bet. I don't think. Okay, I'll speak to you after. All right. Love you. Be safe. Let me okay, know. Okay. Thank you. Like I understand why he wants to do that. Just knowing them, that's not that's not a thing. I don't think that he would be interested in. Where is his tower? It's up. Here. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Dean. <laughs> Is it here? No. Is it here? Oh, I found it. <laughs> Greetings, Nancy. Hello, Leslie. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just a bit stressful today. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, we can have it here today. Um, so I was just speaking to uh, Dean over the phone. 
and he said that there has been some uh, troubling advancements that happened this evening. Yeah, that's the nicest way of putting it. Mm hmm. Could you explain uh, what happened from your perspective? Absolutely. Um, there is a fella who I've now been told his name is Oscar, who uh, has been up at the racetrack for a few weeks. And we've tried speaking to him a few times. I don't know if you know this, but myself and some associates own the racetrack. Right. We've tried speaking to him a few times, and he's kind of just said, get out of here. Why don't you take off? And so we go and we speak to him every few days. Just to see if maybe, I don't know if he's going to change his mind. People in the city are a little temperamental sometimes. So do we just go and try to throw some money at him every, every few days? And um, today is the first day that something happened and we don't know what it is and we don't know to say we didn't know what would happen mm -hmm. uh, he's a construction worker and we have had a construction request in on the racetrack for a really long time to have it paved to have locks on the doors to have a stash in there just small things and um mm -hmm. We thought maybe Oscar was there for us. He seemed really pleasant. He was always smiling when he was asking for his money. Um, so we thought it was maybe to pave our racetrack. Um, when you were filming Corpo Kid up at Polito, I also saw a fella on some horses and we thought maybe it was you can buy a horse, you know, at a racetrack. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know what's going on if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but I think it's safe to say that it's it's not constructions, uh, not construction, and it's not horses. Right. But whatever we did, we wanted to solve the puzzle. We wanted to. We like doing science together. We like figuring stuff out. We like seeing what steps are next. Whatever it is is obviously a lot more serious than we had anticipated. But. Um, I'm sure you heard Go what on. happened next. Yes, but I would like to hear from you. I got called down to the airport and put in a plane with Lang and Harry and Tony and Dean. I got a shout outs to Tony, by the way, for flying in the fog because it was very foggy, very spooky, good atmosphere. Ryan, right, yes, mood, I saw the, uh, the very, forecast. Very foggy. Uh, he did. A, he did a great job. I just want to put that out there. He did a really stellar job of Link. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, we had a conversation, might be putting it nicely. There, uh, Nancy, there is no need to be eloquent. I understand, but I try my best at any given time to be eloquent. Okay, but I'm telling you that you don't have to in my talent right now. I want you to tell me what happened from your perspective and your perspective only, that is it. We put all the money that we had, essentially, into what we thought was gonna be something fun. Not realizing it was obviously something a lot more intense and a lot more important than what we thought. And our lives have now been threatened. And everything that we have has been threatened. Which just reinforces the fact that it's a lot more important than we thought it was. Right. Uh, to be clear, I don't know what the subject of the matter is. And I honestly can't, don't care. We, uh, the we reason don't know I even... what it is either, though. That's the thing. Right. And that's, that's fair and dandy. Uh, you know, whoever whoever is dealing with that, they talk to them. My concern comes in where I hear that there is a rumble in my business grapevine that could cause aftershock that I don't quite particularly enjoy to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I understand from the conversation that I heard, you stood your ground in meaning that you, you, you felt like you were not in the wrong for doing what you did. Is this correct? Yes, and I still stand by that because... We had every right to be there. That man 
And we don't own the man. This is something that came up in our conversation as well. Obviously, we don't own the man, but it's our property, so we have every right to be there. If we were trespassing on private rooster's property to go around and be sneaky, then I can understand if somebody was upset or, you know, if it was at PDM or something like this. But this was this was our racetrack. We go up there all the time. Um, but it's... We didn't mean, we didn't mean to do anything wrong. After our conversation with Lang, he told me that as soon as we went and gave the guy money, basically he got scared and decided to cancel any yeah. instructions that he was giving the rest of them. And okay. how were we supposed to know that? Right. We went- Here's the deal. And go ahead. Yes, I will. Um. Here's the deal. It doesn't matter to me um, if you think that you did something voluntarily, if you did something involuntary, it's it's completely irrelevant. Uh, I understand that you did not explicitly try to fuck with any one of our money, because the, the problem is when you fuck with Wang's money, you also fuck with my money and his money. It's it's kind of a, a trifecta in a sense, in a sense. Now I understand that this was not your intention, but it was the outcome of your actions. And there are some things in the city, Nancy, where even though you might consider what you did to not be your fault, you sometimes have to uh, safeguard what happened, even though, again, you didn't think you did anything to deserve it. Mm -hmm. Lang is one of those people where if he feels that you owe him money for any type of reason, you are better off paying it. And I don't say that as a threat. I say that to in order for you to secure your own future. I, 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 if 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 you if you if you choose to draw the bond, this Nancy Drew, you lose a lot more than what normal people would lose, and it is not worth it. And I I understand that in, from what you're telling me, at least the reason you are standing your ground is because you believe you didn't do something wrong, and I don't think anybody thinks that you did something wrong. Well, you did something wrong, but not. I, not knowingly, right? No. And I think no. something that I, I want you to know is that I respect you and Lang and Dean so much. Right, I know that. But you understand why it is problematic that you uh, want to stand your ground on this for the fact that you believe you didn't do anything wrong, with that, where in this context it's, it's honestly quite irrelevant. It happened and somebody's going to have to pay for it not about right or wrong you're doing a tremendous job as, as a ceo and everything you've done for us it, it, it's there's not many people in the city that can do that but don't make a mistake thinking that we don't have options nancy it's options we don't want to take but the options exist and in some context it is better for you to 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 swallow your pride everybody here knows that you didn't do anything wrong knowingly didn't do anything wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. It's around it. It's completely around it. Do you understand why? I'd like you to tell me. Do you want me to tell you because you don't understand or because you want to hear me say it? I want to hear you say it. Well, it's quite elementary. There are some people in the city that you be best to listen to. It's, again, look at the two different outcomes here. One outcome, you get the money, which you can't get. It's not that much money. Let's be real, Nancy Drew. You continue as a CEO. You keep doing your work. You get your money back eventually. Everything is squared. And most likely, you will find more opportunities with us in the future. I agree. Option number two might not be so so gracious for you and your friends. And, and I, I, I don't feel like I need to reinforce that as a threat because it's not a threat. It's I'm quite sure you are aware of the reality. You're not a delusional person, are you? Say that again? You're not a delusional person, are you? No. Yeah, no, you're quite I'm a realist, not. are you not? Yes. So why is it that you feel like you need to hold your fundament so strongly in this, knowing that People involved know that you didn't do anything wrong knowingly. That's not why you're asked to do this. You you understand that too, right?
Yes. So why is it that you hold so strongly to it? Because I think knowing the amount of money that went into this I just need you to understand that I don't want to be taken advantage of because you know that you have the upper hand on me. I'm a bit confused. You're going to have to explain that, but explain it better. I just mean that, like, you and Cerberus obviously hold a great amount of power and respect in this city. And that respect, I still have that for all of you. And I don't think that will change. But I just want you to know that the $100,000 is a lot of money for us. How many people are you? There's there's four of us. Uh, we have other people involved, but we pour all of our money into science, into figuring stuff out, into puzzles, into working out the next thing. Mm-hmm. So, so the reason you don't want to pay the money is because you're financially strapped. Is that what you're saying? That's part of it, for sure. Okay, so then why have you not tried to work out a payment plan? Why have you instead flat out denied the proposal? I never flat out denied the proposal. No, I did. That's a lie. I did flat out deny it. That being said, um, I wasn't given an opportunity for a payment plan. Um, nor was I in an appropriate headspace to even think that that was an option. Right. When your life is threatened by someone you respect very much, a an easy repayment plan is not really on the top of your mind, especially when you get a text message that says 24 hours, period. Okay, but Lang, Lang <laughs> is very emotional. You know this. He was kind of crazy about stuff like this. But... Let's rewind back a little bit. You remember the last conversation we had here in the, in this office? Mm-hmm. You did something that I still remember. Um, I'm not a, sure exactly what you said, but you said something very strong, and you doubled down upon it, which which uh, surprised me. Not a lot of people do that. So, the way I understand you, Nancy Drew, is you're a gambling woman. You like to double down. You have balls. And sometimes... That's a good person to be. Sometimes so it is good. not. Sometimes so it is better to maybe not double down and be reasonable. Especially against somebody that you're feeling is being unreasonable because sometimes you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. and, and when you say that we have a lot of power and respect in the city, that is true. But I would not, I would not say that we rule with fear. People want to be affiliated with us because we give them great opportunities that other people cannot offer them. We are also good at what we do. We hire people, we elevate people that have these type of skills. I agree. And by, by you putting down your foot and doing this, not only does it obviously create repercussions for you, but it creates repercussions in another field that, that some maybe don't consider it. You will not be able to use these abilities that you have for the purpose that you are meant for. And I think in the long run, Nancy Drew, this is an unwise decision to take. I agree, for sure. This is why I've been wanting to give the money the whole time. But it's it's Mick and Thomas who don't. Are you influenced by your associates? Yes. We, uh... How would they react if you uh, didn't double down, as you have? Not well. But also, but is this part of your worry? Uh, I believe part of their concern is coming from a place of not knowing you three as well as I do. Um, like, I've been covering for Lang for an attempted murder. I went into interrogation, I got put on a 24-hour hold. I... 
let's say I didn't understand that side of knowing you when I started working for you. You're saying you as an entity or you as, as me, me as me as me. But I try my best to do right by the people I work with and the people I associate myself with. Mm -hmm. So being in the middle of my friends and my coworkers and my group and in the middle of you and Lang and Dean, mm -hmm. it's a tough spot to be, Leslie. You're not incorrect. It's a very difficult place to be, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, these associates of yours, do they gain anything from you working with us, or is it more of a personal endeavor? I'd say it's more personal. Mm -hmm. That makes it even more difficult for you, I imagine? Yeah, very much. Because if you take option B, you seem selfish to them. But if you take option A, you lose your, your personal goals and direction in life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but part of paying back is like we simply just don't have the money. I think he is... I think he thinks we do. And, and we just don't. Right. Money can always be found. I, I, I don't think $100,000 is that much money. And I, I realize that for me, I, I have quite a misconstruction when it comes to money. But four people getting $100,000 is, is, is achievable, at least over time. So he wants $100,000. Um, That's confirmed. Yeah, I'm trying to think for you, in a sense, because I, I, I think I have a good understanding of this See, situation. See, I still thought in. it was $250,000. If you want $100,000, like, I can literally that, do that right that now. But you work with, it becomes very, very problematic. It does. Mm. Can I say I appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation with you? Yeah, of course. It's, um... Sometimes it can be good to speak with a third party, which I am in this instance, to a certain degree. Mmm... Are you are you aware of, 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 of before before I spoke to you? Are you did you fully consider the, the the choice you you would be taking by putting your foot down, or was was there some type of uh, did you think you can get away by, by acting the way you did? I honestly don't know. Yeah, that's what I fear. And I I feel like sometimes you go out on a limb and you hope that you made a good decision. It's almost like trading on the market. You make a good bet, and either you go home with a lot of money or you go home with nothing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so far, it's done me pretty well. Right. I can objectively tell you that you made a difficult and incorrect decision. Uh, so, these decisions doing you well will stop here unless you, you do something about it. Yep. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Uh, and and, and, and what, your, what your associates need to consider is this, it's not only you that will be in, in, in quite a predicament. Yeah. The thing that Cerberus does is, you know, any, anybody in the city can can take somebody's finger or, or do whatever they want, right? <laughs> anybody oh. can do anything. Right? Funny, because we took someone's toe. But we have a unique set of skills that allow us to crumble the foundation of anybody's life while still remaining, you know, let them letting them live. You could be banned at every establishment. Uh, you know, no work opportunities. Nothing. It's worse than dying, and it, it really is. Mm -hmm. I think it's good to consider what type of relationship you want to hold going forward and also for your associates. It's a very, very, very stupid thing to uh, to make a decision like this over. It's $100,000. You're saying you don't have the money, which, you know, it's possible you don't have the money, but $100,000 is doable. It's, it's People can, can, can summon that type of money. Yep. So you really need to ask yourself, it's a hundred thousand dollars worth everything that you built and everything that we built for you. It's really just giving them the money back that they've given me. There's a lot more coming in the future for you, Nancy Drew. And again, I objectively think you're making a very, very, very incorrect decision. really good it was really good mm -hmm. 
When does he need the money by? He probably just needs the money. Okay. You have to be careful how you angle this to your associates. I agree. And something else you should consider is maybe I have one of those happy days that I had like a month ago and I, I just maybe I run into you out of all people and I'm like, oh, yeah, I was going to give you the next person I found $100,000. Maybe you have that day and everything is solved. Who knows, right? That would be a dream. It's happened before. It might happen again. I'm not saying it will, but it could. So weigh your options here. Just be smart about how you t talk to your associates with this, Nancy. There's two sides of this fence, but they are both equally tawny. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Again, I, I only say this because, uh, one, I think you're a good person, and you're somebody that I think would be unfortunate to let go based on that premise. Uh, but two, you are also somebody that generates money into our economy and helps us, you know, alleviate our business efforts. But while I say that, Nancy Drew, you are you are not irreplaceable. Everybody's replaceable. Everyone. Yeah. Yes, Dean, Lang, myself, we're all replaceable. People often make the misnotion in the city that they're not. But they are. Everyone is. Understood. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll keep the communication up with you regarding the money. I think for now, don't talk to your associates about this. And we'll see what we can do, all right? Okay. All right. Do you feel alleviated? Do you feel stressed? How do you feel, Nancy Drew? I feel like I'm going to be doing a lot of paintball pickup games and fishing trips in the next little while. Yeah, well... Mistakes can cost, whether they are intentional or not. Yep. But sometimes it is a price that is worth to pay. Yep. A solution will be found. It might take a while, but it will be found. It was good talking to you, Nancy. Thank you for inviting me here. I do appreciate it. Of course. Call are me you, if you need me. Are you going to be able to communicate that with the others? Of course, yes. Thank you. Have a good day. Very nice evening. Damn, dude. I was going to pay the money. That's the thing. Like, I'm fine to pay the money. I have the money, even. I just... I want them to understand that $100,000 for people is a fuckload. Like, like, it's a lot of money. And so them being like, we need 100000 or even $250,000, like, that's, that's life-changing money for people. Like, that's life-changing money. And I think they have it skewed differently just because of how much money Cerberus has. Hey, are you around? Yeah, I'm at the county club. I'll be right there. You have keys, right? No, I do not. Seven eight five six. So, like, if he had said from the beginning, we need a hundred thousand dollars, I would have been bummed. But I'm like, yeah, like I can pay that right now. I do have the money in my bank account. I'm the only one who has this money, though. So it's, I'm going to be the one who pays it, sadly. All right, I'm going to be in my head for just a minute when you get in here, but you have keys now. Yeah, yeah, no stress. Right. Um, but it's like, it's just funny because that's money they've given me that is just coming back to me. It's, um, or uh, they've given me that's coming back to them, I should say. And today has been so juicy, dude. This has been some fun ass role play. I'm so glad that meeting with Leslie happened, though. Like, one, it reiterated that he wants hundred thousand dollars, not two fifty. And, um, 
reinforces that Leslie and Nancy think a lot in the same way. Where it's like I feel like Mick reacts a lot of the a lot of the time like Lang with kind of outbursts makes it seem irrational, but that's the only word that I can think of right now of like um. a lot of emotion behind what he's saying, which is completely valid. And Dean, I think is kind of like Thomas, where he's like quiet and kind of methodical. And then I want to say, I feel like Nancy is a little bit more like Leslie in the sense of the conversation that we just had. I don't know if that's a fair assessment, but just from this conversation, I feel like that's a little more that way. I also just need to grab my water bottle, Chatroom. I'm so sorry. Give me, give me one second. <laughs> 